in the back there's tons of room i've got the seat set for me and there's still many inches and the back's carved out so that i can fit my knees in there if there's a little bit of space challenging going on a cargo net temperature controls for the rear passengers but just the one two usb as it says charge only and a power outlet the interior is absolutely delicious and on the doors there's some rather nice metal trim however I don't think these cheap plastic speakers over such an expensive sound system has done this any favours. The electric seats have a memory position and there's some more of that nice metal trim. And here on the dash are some essential things like controls for the heads up display, automatic lights and fog lights. The steering wheel is beautifully laid out and this is one of my favourite things, Audi's virtual dash. And you can change the view of it by simply pressing the button. You can also change what's displayed so you can have detail, navigation, really anything you like. But you can also have it displayed up here. You can probably just see it. We start at the top with the floating tablet. This also has Apple CarPlay and these vents that continue right along the dash. Below that, simplified air conditioning controls, again with some touch buttons. Touching the button brings up detail and then operating it up or down makes it work. You can see here is the controller to sync all the air conditioning controls to the drivers or to have three separate zones. Below that, this button turns the screen on or off and below that controls that you probably wouldn't use quite so often. There's a drive select button which moves the car through various suspension, steering and throttle settings. I'm preferring to leave this in comfort. Below that we've got the start button, a USB and this one connects to the Apple CarPlay system and a 12 volt outlet. Behind that we've got some touch sensitive buttons which also press and as you can see on the screen I've got them set to radio channels but you could just as easily put in your home address. The command centre is very easy to use and you can also use voice as input if you want. A short press uses the car's systems and a longer press uses Apple CarPlay if your phone's plugged in. Behind that is the on off button and volume switch for the radio, auto hold and the electric park brake. I think this gear selector is just beautiful and it acts as a hand rest so that you can operate the dial while resting your hand. This is one of the few cars that I've left in comfort for most of the time. There's plenty of other settings to choose from, but comfort is amazing. And it would be a mistake to think that a car that weighs this much, that is as big as this car is, that's a full five door hatchback, to be so nippy with a humble four cylinder engine. But it is, it is magnificent. Of course the indicators are on the wrong side, but that's par for the course. But this car is almost set up for automated driving. Almost, not quite. The active lane control keeps you well and truly centered within the lane. We did a trip out to Picton yesterday and the weather was abominable. Not complaining about the rain, but it was pretty dreadful. The active cruise control kept me a distance from the car in front and the active lane control kept me in the middle of the lane. If I wanted to indicate to change lane, it then let me change without uh, trying to steer me back into the lane again. We had last week BMW's M2 and sure, it was quicker to 100, but this does that sprint in six seconds with a puny four cylinder engine. I think that is astounding. The real thing you have to ask yourself is, how much more power do you need? 
you can only go 110 kilometers an hour. The automated parking gets you both into and out of a parking spot. Although I think largely automated parking has gone by the wayside because most car companies tell me people tend not to use it. But I think that's because they don't know how. The interior quality is beautiful. It looks like a beautiful gentleman's club. Of course, this is where it's going to spend most of its time, in city traffic. And you stop and start all the time. But the cruise control has a trick up its sleeve. It's fully automated, so if I... I've got this now set to 60 kilometers an hour. I've got no feet on brakes or accelerator. And when the cars in front take off, I will too. When they slow down, I'll slow down right to a stop. So in peak hour, queued traffic, you don't have to do a thing. You can just sit back and listen to the Bang & Olufsen sound system. But the main thing is just how light this is for such an enormous car. The steering is light. The suspension is supremely smooth. The cabin is incredibly quiet. The brakes are incredibly sharp. It's got a large boot. It's economical. And I found myself using the Apple CarPlay to do my navigation. But of course, if you do that, it won't show up in this central screen. In order to do that, you need to use the car's navigation system. And then you can simply go up into the main screen and change your view. But of course, you're not going to need to have navigation in both screens. You could then change this one, for example, to radio and have your navigation here. But remember also, the navigation is showing up in the main heads-up display. So I need never take my eyes off the road. The Matrix lights are particularly useful. They've got a fully automated high beam system that adjusts individual cells so that no one oncoming is dazzled. And then once the car or person or street lights gone, all of the lights just come back up magically. There are profiles too that you can set up. You can have different driver profiles. You can also have different seat positions. You can adjust the mirrors to just how you want and save all that as well. There's a, a sense that the A5, which also comes in a coupe, is looking after you. If I had my choice, I would definitely go for this five-door model. It's got a hatchback and I think is a little bit more practical. The two-door, you're going to struggle to get into the back seat of, even though it's quite a big car. As always, don't forget if you've liked the film, hit like on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.